Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Lucid, and we are back with Your Dreams and My Memes. Where I am casting a game with a bunch of people who have been sentenced to carry out the game uh, with a pretender god I have made for them. A message from all. That is strength, boy. That is power. What is steel compared to the hand that wields it? Thulsa, doom right now, if he could speak. A moral victory, but a costly one regardless. Honestly shocked he tried to fight me head on. <coughs> I was worried he would worried he would sidestep in a 61. I planned to sort of pinch her counterattack if he had, but I would have lacked the support from PD. He only had like 10 PD there. Have construction three next turn, so hope le hopefully lesser air elementals prove more effective than flying shards. Which did nothing that fight. Okay, cool. From Ubar, G Lucid, how come Hinnom uh, gets to have two forts? It's because he expanded. Uh, also, that indie province near me, between me and Micklin, is bugging the fuck out of me, but I must not waver. I must only take Hinnom provinces. Micklin even told me that I could take some provinces from him and has nulled the nap out, but unfortunately, those provinces do not have Hinnom flags. That's pretty funny. All right, so he attacks here. Okay, so he's using the Sultan alone. This is good. So I was saying he should have been doing. Now, if you know there's going to be Dawn Guard, I'd say Mist Form is probably one of the lower priority ones. I'd rather have like Air Shield or something, maybe. Um, but like obviously, when Temper Flesh comes out, that's going to be a really big deal. Uh, next one is this one. Personal luck. Oh, this guy's Astral, so this guy could be magic tooled by Hinnom. He. But it's also a pretty sick one to have. Twist Fate's actually really good. Uh, he did Lucky. You actually want to do Twist Fate. But cool. Just, there's the, the surprise of these. Uh, okay, and that's it. So let's go to Ubar and see what happened. Okay, here we go. He's on top of this fort. He's got an army here. There's a lot of Hinnom troops. Hinnom may ride out here. The question, though, is does he have uh, Sultan counters? Which come online quite... Rather early, I don't remember. Enchanted Salt might be Construction 4, but it's also possible it's Construction 2. It's not an item I make much, so I don't really know. Um, So yeah, Ubar's got options. Does he have another Sultan? No Sultan in the cap, so I guess he'll be getting one next turn. But, uh, wait, where's the army? So I guess this is the army? See, that's what I think is a little bit of the problem. You need somebody to be the army. He probably should pick this guy. This is totally worth the trip of a mage to come out and pick him up and bring him back. Um, anywho, uh, that's that battle. Micklin, we have the battle for Micklin. Micklin has rode out with the army that was uh, to the east of the cap. Now, if they had attacked at the same time, it might have been a little different. Especially if he could have gotten protection on these guys. I don't know if he had all three, though. Uh, unlike a lot of these other hell builds, he didn't have an awake god to help him with research. Then Helheim storms. And that is the end of Micklin. Everybody, golf clap for Micklin. And golf clap for Helheim. This is good war, guys. Thank you for putting on the show. Abyssia just... Oh, expanding everywhere. Bumps Helheim. Uh, these Hell Heritings do not have fire resistance, I will point out. And uh, Fear and All are not useless at all against Burning Ones. This would not be a bad direction for 
It's possible that Abyssia just decides this is going to be his war, and he's going to come kick these guys off of uh, Micklin's cap. Um, I actually don't know. Did he have... It's his warlord. Especially if you put some guys on guard commander. I don't think Helheim can fight this stack. Not until he gets like air elementals or something. I think this stack can just walk over here and take Micklin's cap from Helheim. Um, oh, he's, he's really determined to get that. I mean, it's worth it. But he is determined to get this. I think he's going to. He's all in on this. I think he's coming over here. I mean, well, no. If he comes up here, he's not really picking a fight. I think he goes over this and picks a fight with Helheim. But he might feel a little bit beat up. He might, and he came out pretty well in expansion. Let's see how he's doing now. He's third. For income, though, he's middle of the pack. He might, he might feel he's big enough. He doesn't need to press it and then come up here and hit these barbs. Uh, but we'll see. He can't cross the river here. So the move, if he's going to fight Helheim, it's going to be here and then on top of the capital. The only problem fighting Helheim is Helheim can raid him to shit, but he obviously can kill the raiders very easily, um, you know, with probably a small squad of burning ones. So we'll, we'll see. I, I don't really know how, you know, like fire elementals too, if he's got the research would, would murder these uh, hell herdings as well. So we'll have to see. I don't really know what's going to happen, but that's exciting. Uh, we've already covered this business. Uh, coming over to Kalem, we have a battle in the fort. There's a lot of lightning bolts. I forget how long the range is on just the normal lightning bolt from... And these slingers... Putting some shots down. The other thing that's worth pointing out is these uh, Kavi archers, uh, once they run out of ammo, they're actually reasonable in melee. You know, they've got this uh, 13 attack ice knife with now all these weapon attacks on it. Uh, they're not amazing. It's not like the TNT bless, but it's pretty good. Uh, by the way, the the particular blesses we gave Kalem are the ones that don't require incarnate, right? Because we gave him decent scales compared to everybody else. And these aren't like great scales, but compared to everybody else, they're not bad. He attacks here and the elves dodge him and attack up. But his cap's under check now, right? Or no, he's probably going to raid all around and then go on the cap. The problem is TNG just, uh, Tiernan I just doesn't have enough stuff. And, uh, I sadly did, gave him a bless that's very good at taking out elite units. Uh, but not very good at dealing with masses of archers. So, I think it's checkmate. I think he's boned. Which kind of sucks. You know, I think that's, it, it's, you know, this kind of gets into some of the theory crafting of, like, Dominions and how people pick builds. But, I think a lot of times people pick builds so that they're not ultimately hosed. You know, like... There's a bless you could pick that would like maybe allow you to just slaughter somebody. But what you're really worried about a lot of times when you pick your bless is some, or your pretender or whatever is somebody coming and slaughtering you. So, um, yeah. Sadly, I don't think there's any... If, if he had his elf army from the beginning... If he had an army of like 80 elves, he could maybe fight this, but I think he would actually still lose because I think these archers are going to plink him down and the lightning bolts and all those other things. But it would at least be a fight, you know, like skill. Maybe he has some research, some other things. He takes some good fights. He could turn it around. I think right now he's just completely checkmate, which which is annoying. But, you know, he'll, he'll be released from playing this build. Um, this wasn't... This, I mean, this was a kind of cool build, right? The idea is you have javelins that are going to get one hit killed, and then you've got Blood Surge, 
and then you're gonna be destroying stuff one hit one kill with these guys it's a kind of cool idea it's not as memey as some of the other ones i'm not really sure what other memes i could have given the tuatha warrior that would have been really funny um i mean maybe i could made them little like uh aura wards but i don't know I feel like that kind of leans too much into what elves already do to be a funny meme because they normally go resistances anyway. But uh, anyway, that's, you know, it's kind of funny. Uh, remains to be seen what he's going to do. Um, but I think he's mostly checkmate. We've already covered Helheim, who's been just devouring Micklin. Um, remains to be seen if Abyssia attacks him. Um, there's a chance they can kill Abyssia if they can snipe the commander, but even then, these guys are going to go berserk and it's going to be a disaster. Uh, coming over to Pangea. He had Baratos on his capital. He is strode out over here. Okay, he attacked on top of this, so he's put a fort on lockdown. He's taken this. That's kind of nice. Oh, we have another battle, though. It's not looking good. So uh, Pangea is casting Swarm, like, dear god, give me, let me do something. The problem is Swarm is not very good against Fire Shield. Oh, he kills a couple of them, though. Oh, he's routed them. Okay, I mean, that was kind of close, but, I mean, 10 White Centaur to kill 3 Colossi Warriors. He does have some Sayir, so that was, I, what did the Sayir do? Oh, well, they're going to have the same thing, yeah. Oh, they're on Guard Commander. Okay. I was like, I didn't see him in the fight. The Black Harpies bounce. Okay, Crystal Sorceress is here. I guess he was trying to raid... Just like, if there were 6 PD, it would have worked. What's nice to do if you have these guys... I mean, I don't think he had any troops. But if you put some troops with them, the nice thing is that they'll probably die and cause an HP route and let your mages escape. The god is still in here. I think the prayers of Pangea rest on that god. It's also possible he can just, like, win the seduction. Like, steal some of the commanders here. That's the other thing. It's like, okay, you know, maybe you do water elementals. Right? In the, the seduction battle. And that might be able to win. But I think the real thing you're betting is, like, maybe I just kill some of the Colossi captains, and then we can kill these guys. If you don't bless them, your centaur will murder them. And then there's already the strat we were talking about with the god and... Trying to get him before Divine Blessing goes off. But they're off the cap. That's significant. And Baratos took a turn to backstep. You know, this army, I forget where it was. I think it was here. But basically, he backstepped and did counter raiding. Uh, and presumably, he's going to resume the offensive soon. The problem is, like, Pangea could move all the stuff back, have the God Patrol, and then try that attack rear thing I was talking about. But I think he's also probably trying to research with the god to hit some critical milestone to thug with the, the Vola. Uh, T and Chi hanging tight in their cap, getting ready. Uh, I've given him the most murderous bless that has ever existed, uh, and he's not getting into an early first war. Feels a little bad, man. I kind of want to see him go tear stuff up. I wonder if he's winning gym income, because that's one of the things T and Chi does really well. Oh, no, right now that's uh, Helheim. But right behind him... Yeah, Helheim just taking over all the Micklin stuff, but right behind him was TNG. Okay. So that covers that column. Hopefully I didn't miss any important battles. I don't think so. Uh, and then coming over to Abyssia, we've already covered this business. Um... Okay, so Ulm has not pressed the advantage. He's kind of happy with what's happened. He's summoning some more dudes. He's getting more slingers. And he's getting ready for a round two. He's got 18 PD here. Maybe that was how much he had in the fight. I forgot to check. But um, 
He's getting ready for a round two. Hopefully round two for him can have some nice things like, I don't know if there's any way for him to do anti-magic. That would be amazing. Like if he has a lizard province around or something. Um, also with the writing on the wall for Pangea, it might not be a bad time to carve out some of this Pangean land. Like just pick up these provinces. And I believe Pangea has made it known in public chat that he's probably not long for the world. He's kind of been complaining about how hard counter he is, how hard countered he is by the build. I think which is a fair thing to complain about. Um, but, you know, that's kind of an indicator. Hey, maybe we should come pick up some of these. I mean, these are really high value provinces right here. So, uh, and this gives some air gems, which would be super nice. So we'll have to see. I don't like the static defense. I mean, he's got a lot of PD. It makes sense to protect this, but like Lanka could just put everything here. Oh, he might be able to reinforce. Yeah, this army actually may be able to make it all the way over here. Because if Lanka put everything here and Ulm knows it, then Ulm could say, okay, we're going to send the whole army here to defend in conjunction with this PD. Because I was going to say, the problem with the static defense is normally you don't want to do it. And maybe Laka can still move, because this is forest. So he might, with forest survival, he might be able to move from the cap over here. But normally the reason you don't want to do static defense is because people can just concentrate forces, and then they know what they're going to hit, and they wipe you out. So we'll have to see. But that is very interesting, and that brings us back to where we started, which means it is time for the current turn. I have finally caught up. And this brings us to the current turn, which is turn 21. I think I've sat here for three hours recording, trying to get caught up. Uh, Micklin, even in my memes, I cannot escape these cursed friggin' elves. Reeeee! GG. GG, Micklin. Uh, message from Calum. Tough turn. I don't think I can win the raiding game because in small groups, TNN will take me apart and I have no idea what his sacreds are. Oh, really? He went into this bliss without knowing it. Um, so I'll take my mage core and my main army and go to his cap to end it in a decisive battle. It looks like he recruited druids as researchers, so I should be able to outnumber him in battle mages. This is a risky play, but I think it's my best shot. Wish me luck. Ooh, that's going to be fun to watch. We're going to start with that battle. From Ubar, can this continue to count as expansion so I can say I haven't yet failed the expansion? No, Grippa, you definitely failed the expansion. We have a battle in Tirnanog. And it's only PD. There's a lot of lightning bolts. Uh oh, friendly fire, beware. Oh no. Uh, some guy's got decayed. This is a problem, by the way, with the Kalem strat. In some ways, it's a little better. Yeah. It, the thing is, he was preparing for a big battle. If it was a big battle, this is the right thing to do. So it was the right play. If you know it's going to be a small thing, sometimes it might be better to put your archers on hold and attack with your troops. Uh, you know, you do risk losing some. All right, let's go see what happens in Kalem. So he has popped Tirnanog's capital and is about to have a big fight. Tirnanog has raided out. Okay, here we go. We got a fight. Small raiding squad in conjunction with two of these guys who are air twos who are going to be casting lightning bolt. So the lightning going after the PD, which is nice. Now it's going after some elves, but oh man, this is not enough birds. Oh, and these guys all have bloodlust now. They are angry. They are very mad that you're on top of their cap. The javelins are coming out and poking big old holes. God, that commander almost died. 
At least the Kavi archers, they are. So that was actually a really good trade. Um, Caitlin brought 70 troops, but got defeated by about 20 sacreds. And this is where you kind of get a sense for like, man, what if Tirnanog had like 50 more of these guys? The, then it would be like a real fight. I think these doomstacks would still be very spooky, even if he had that many. But like this is, while well, this is a ton more mages and that's very important, very, very important. It's not really a ton more troops over here. Like this was 70, this is 200. You know, it's, it's a difference, but I mean, if he brings everything he's got, if he's got 50 of these total, he could maybe take this fight. I don't think so. I think he's still going to lose, but uh, mostly due to the mage commitment. But I mean, also the archers are going to tear him up. We'll see who got most of the kills here from, from Caleb's side. Caviar, she's only with three kills. That's well, three of the four. But some of these might have been friendly fire, too. Oh, it's also the PD that died. Hard to say. Hard to say. Also, I'd like to see Wind Guide come out. An early Wind gu uh, Guide timing, I think, would be really nice. This guy's raiding out here. Kayla making more stuff. A very cool big battle next turn. Stay tuned. Helheim. There's only one province left of Mickland, so we don't have the uh, the Mickland leaves the game event. Uh, Abyssia did choose to move north. Did not want to come over here and pick a fight with Helheim, which I think he could have. That is a big group of dudes. I mean, this group would punish these guys, though. He could he really could come over here and take the capital. He just has to kind of protect his commander from the Valkyries, but I don't think that's too hard. And these guys literally can't do anything to these dudes. Oh god, is Kirby going for Grippa? That would be the funniest thing. Uh, he shouldn't, though. Gr Grippa, Grippa's Bless would also fuck these guys up. Something fierce. It would not be good. Speaking of Grippa getting fucked up... Uh, okay, we have literally all the mages Hinnom has made. I don't know what they're going to be doing. It's a lot of Akkas. I guess they're going to do, like, Tangle Vines and Earth Meld and stuff, because it's Nature and Earth Mages. And then he's got a Melquirt, just with the Dawn Blade, but he's got morale, uh, a Morale Hat on, which is also going to give him a bit extra fire resistance. And then a bunch of these Light Infantry. On Grippa's side... I think he had some gin, just decide to randomly die. A ritual sacrifice to start off con oh no, it was a falcon. Okay. I don't think you want okay, in this case, the attacking rear is dangerous. I think a general attacking rear is a little dangerous. So he just got hit with stun. And I think that's from fascination. And this Melkwitz trying to go to town on him. Um, he does have a lot of mirror image, and that's probably what's negating a lot of these Melkwitz hits. Yeah, mirror image negated damage. So that's just a matter of time till that leaves. Oh, but he runs away from the fear R on the Melkwitz. Again, if he just had these guys on like attack closest, he would have killed this whole army. Uh, the Melkwitz probably would have run. But these, the troops are not even really helping here. Now, if that Melkor was properly equipped... I mean, here's the thing. I think if you have the army come, the um, the Melkor's not going to engage, and you just kill the army. If the... Um, yeah. And in that case, you wouldn't want to bring the djinn. But if it's only the Melkrit that shows up, and he's kitted with anti-djinn gear, you probably want support to try to actually kill him. And he's on Hinnom's capital. But look what Hinnom has found. 
Castle Arcanum. Allows you to get wizards, which, uh, importantly, Hinnom doesn't normally get access to water, so that's important. And then some nice gems, and of course, perhaps most importantly, a huge fucking castle. You're welcome. So that's pretty sick. I think this Horite Shaman found that. Raids down here, kill some of these guys. And I believe the Sultan retreated down this way. Uh, Hinnom really needs to make some anti-Sultan kit. Uh, he doesn't have long to do it. Because uh, honestly, like this battle should have been won by, by Ubar, except that Grippa kind of misplayed. So... Uh, you know, if these forts start getting locked down, it's going to be in a bad way. Unfortunately, Grubba doesn't really have anything to siege because he's been getting his djinn, like, ritually killed off every fight. So, and retreating all the time. So if Grippa had, like, 40 djinn, he could start, you know, popping some of these easier forts and making their, his way through some of these. But, um, sadly, they're, they're all dying the way of bodyguards. It's like, let me, this is what it's like. It's like, you're bodyguarding this guy. So imagine, like, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, hires you as a bodyguard, and you're, like, like a pimple-covered, like, 90-pound, like, Dominions player that's, like, 18 years old and is in college. All right? And Dwayne... And you don't know how to use guns. All you know how to do is play Dominions. And Dwayne The Rock Johnson hires you as a bodyguard. Like, he doesn't need you to bodyguard him. He's fine. Okay, you know, go get in the, like, join the army. <laughs> like, you are needed elsewhere, right? You're not needed to guard Dwayne, the rock, which I hope Grippa... I'm going to ask Grippa to name one of his uh, sultans Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I think that is an appropriate request, and this is the current turn, so I can do that. Um. Okay. So I'm actually surprised. I, I don't... Like, if, if Arco was playing Abyssia here, I guarantee you he would have attacked Helheim if he knew Helheim's Bless. Because Helheim can actually do nothing to control this fort. Like, this fort is Abyssia's, and he's just leasing it to Helheim right now. Now, that will change, right? Like, once Helheim gets, like, big air elementals and stuff, that can change pretty quickly. But I don't think they have it yet, and... Yeah. But really, until Helheim gets air elementals, Abyssia is going to ruin them. Uh, and that timing may not last much longer, like, um, cause Kirby, Kerberty won, oh, he's got sages too, so actually he could have it pretty soon. But yeah, basically until he gets air elementals, it's gonna be very bad. Um... Kirby's probably going to try to chill. Now, he must be number one in all the graphs. Provinces, he's number one. Forts, he's number one. Income, he's number one. Gym income, he's number one. Research, where is he? Okay, definitely not number one. Dominion, number three. Army size, definitely not number one. That's the birds. So the birds had a bit of a downtick here with, uh, with this squad getting picked off. It's kind of funny, he was like, I'm not going to try to win the raiding war, so I'm going all in on the cap. But then he gets, like, ruined in a raiding war, so that's kind of funny. I think the corpse constructs couldn't get there, so he, like, kind of had to march some of the people here. And maybe that's what Tirnanog knew. He knew that the land troops would have to march, and he chose to go here. So that might have made sense. Tirnanog might have done this very intentionally to, like, defeat Calum in detail. Um, but, uh, sadly, this army is out of position, like, it's not going to be able to make it home. We'll just have to see. But I think we've covered everything. This is, I feel like there's so much in flux right now. So Helheim's going to get to sit and consolidate, which he's going to like. It's going to put Kirby in a great position. Um, Kalem, we're going to have like a huge battle. And I think Kalem's going to win, but there could always be some big surprise from Tirnanog. Uh, We've got Grippa doing Grippa things here with uh, with Hinnom, which is just entirely entertaining to watch. And we've got this, like, big showdown. Oh, wait, we didn't cover this. Because 
he was expecting that Lanka might move everything over here, and so he moved it. So he was doing what we were talking about. Because Lanka actually probably could move because he has force survival on his guys. So he probably could have moved the big, like everybody over here into this huge PD dump. He would have just, that would have been the end of the game for Lanka. But instead, Lanka comes back home. And the stare down is going to continue. There's some things that could help, like Lanka getting Rush of Strength, maybe getting more Blood Slaves for like truly horrific amounts of Imp Spam. Um, you know. Lanka's powering up, and Robzy is a good player, so he's definitely got something in mind as he's waiting to come back and and deal the blow to Alm. But I think we'll have to wait till next time to see what happens. Wait, did we cover this? Yeah, we did. Oh. No, we didn't cover Pangea. God, these guys are already back here? Now, it's not like Pangea can't kill these guys. It's that he's going to just have horrific losses in the process. I think this is the kind of trade Pangea is okay taking. Kills 10 guys and loses 6. I think he is totally okay with this. I mean, it's attrition, but that's that's kind of what he needs. But Baratos is back on the cac. The Vola moves out as a thug. No fire resistance, but has enough protection it might not matter. Has a big pointy spear. She casts Swarm. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. When you kill him as a thug, you need to be doing... If she has Swarm, she has the thing. She can do Moss Body... Swarm's four, so she should be doing... This is all wrong. Uh, he should be doing Liquid Body, Moss Body, maybe Quick quick and Self, but Mirror Image probably. Liquid Body, Moss Body, Mirror Image, uh, Bark Skin. Oh, she does have some fire resistance. Oh, she cast the thing that gives her some fire resistance. Elemental Fortitude. Yeah, do not swarm. You're wasting your nature gems. Thug. Fatigue, you're all fatigued out too. So, yeah, I mean, script here should be liquid body, moss body, bark skin, elemental fortitude, mirror image attack. Um, and hopefully that's okay. Or personal regen instead of bark skin maybe, and then attack. Or, I don't know, you figure out which of those blesses you want. Like, maybe you make a bark skin amulet here instead, right? And then do personal regen. So he's got it. He literally has the tools he needs right now. He literally has all the tools he needs. But he scripted it wrong. And then advance and cast. I don't like this at all. No, Pangea, no. All right, please do justice and murder everyone on your cap. There's some things that could go wrong. I know it's going to have minor shock resistance. Definitely needs uh, personal regen, because, like, one of the things that uh, Baratos could do is make a lot of baby air elementals. And this chassis will have five shock resistance after elemental fortitude. But that's not enough if there's, like, eight air elementals. So I think you you raid you keep raiding with these guys. Oh god. At grievous cost. Oh these say here. There's a lot of angry white centaur though. All right, I mean, obviously not ideal. But, I mean, ideally you want to be killing PD with these guys, but 
I mean, he's been getting raided. So, I mean, could be worse. Not a ton worse, but... I mean, he's winning the battles. Like, he took heavy attrition here, but he's winning the battles. I would say in net, in terms of the trades, it's okay for Pangea, except that he has an army on his cap. He should have probably patrolled with his god with a proper script. And then he would have wiped this army and won those battles. That would have been a turning point of the war. Like, the whole war would be different. Especially if he was able to, like, I don't know, this be hard rating here. So, let's see. This could have gone different ways. Tianchi moving south towards Baratos with his main stack. I think Baratos is about... I think Pangea has requested the help of Tianchi. And Tianchi is coming. And Tianchi actually is reasonably... This is actually a very good matchup for Tianchi. The archers less so. The archers are just going to cause friendly fire. But these Warriors of the Five Elements have fire resistance, so they're not going to be immediately chopped to pieces by the shield. I don't know if they have enough. They'll still take some damage. But I think with their Bless, they will blow these guys the fuck up. Even though, you know, they don't technically have magic weapons, they have all these other little things, I think they will blow them up. Ideally, you might be able to get Flame Ward on them, and then they would really do a lot better. Because they're still going to be taking some chip damage from the fire shield, I think. And when they're swinging twice, you know, and it's going to... Because they don't have magic weapons, it's going to take a few hits to probably kill a Colossi Warrior. Um, yeah, he's definitely going to attack him. And the other option is he goes for this throne. That would actually be really sick for him to get rid of some of these death scales. But um, but we'll see. I, I think he's going to attack. I think it's a good matchup for TNG. I don't really like the archers. Colossi Warriors have big shields... It's just going to cause friendly fire. Uh, I would get something else. Like chaff to guard your mages or something. Uh, anyhow, this is getting spicy. It's looking like... I mean, one good script from the god. This turns around on Baratos. And then you might have Pangea coming out on top, even though it's a really unfavored matchup for them. Baratos does have... Uh, two extra forts, though, with mages, in, uh, with labs in them. This one doesn't have a lab, actually. So, uh, but hopefully soon. What is this? Devil's Den. Blood Mage Manor to summon a devil. He needs to get a Blood Mage over here ASAP. Okay. Uh, I, apparently I missed that conflict, but I think we've got the rest of them. Tune in next time. Let's see what happens. Uh, and until then, be safe and take care.